Honorable Chairperson, respected directors, sir, respected teachers, and learned audience. Assalamualaikum. Good morning and very welcome to all in this scientific seminar on behalf of Department of Anatomy. Today we are going to present on morphometric study of oxygen monitors and its clinical importance. And it will be presented by Dr. Diluba Prosmiri, Assistant Professor, Department of Anatomy. This session will be chaired by Professor Dr. Gubada Gulshalara, Head of the Department of Anatomy. Now I request Professor Dr. Gubada Gulshalara, Madam, to take the chair and conduct the rest of the session, please. Respected Director Sir, respected teachers and learned audience, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning and very welcome to all in this scientific uh, seminar on behalf of Department of Anatomy. We are going to present morphometric study of occipital chondri and its clinical importance. And it will be presented by Dr. Hilduba Kosmili, Assistant Professor, Department of Anatomy. Now I request Dr. Hilduba Kosmili to present her topic. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. And very welcome to scientific seminar on morphometric study of occipital condyles and its clinical importance. With the kind permission of respected chairperson, I, Dr. Dilru Bakos Miri, Assistant Professor of Department of Anatomy, going to present the topic. The topic is taken from the thesis work titled Morphological and Morphometric Study of Fully Ossified Dry Human Occipital Bone. Rationally, the primary aim of this study is to increase knowledge about morphology and morphometry of occipital condyles and correlate with different studies. Morphometry will help surgeons for pre-operative planning of intracranial approach and reduce post-operative complications. General ob objectives were to determine the morphological and morphometric features of occipital condyles in fully ossified dry human occipital bone, to provide anatomical knowledge of occipital condyles to forensic experts, neurosurgeons, and orthopedic surgeons, to grow interest among the researchers for the future study. Specific objectives were to observe the position of hypoglossal canal in relation to occipital condyle, to measure the length, width, height of occipital condyles, to measure the anterior posterior intercondylar distance, to measure the distance from anterior tip of occipital condyle to basion, to measure the distance from posterior tip of occipital condyle to opisthion. Here the external features of occipital bone, here we can see the parts of occipital bone, this expanded part that is convex and it is called squamous part. <coughs> this is foramen magnum and here is the occipital condyle that is our today's topic and here we can see the hypoglossal canal that has an in intimate relationship with the occipital condyle. Here the figure showing the internal features of occipital bone. Here is the hypoglossal canal and this is the cut part of the basilar part of occipital bone that is cut from the sphenoid bone. The occipital condyle is a bony structure lying anterolateral to the foramen magnum and connect the cranium to the vertebral column. It articulates with superior articular facets on the lateral mass of atlas forming the atlanto-occipital joint. Occipital condyles are important element to maintain the head vertically. The stability of this joint is maintained by congruency of articular surfaces together with capsular ligamentous factor. The margin gives attachment to the capsule of atlanto occipital joints and on the medial side of each is rough impression or tubercle for the alar ligament. Anterior and posterior atlanto occipital membrane is continuous laterally with capsular ligament. Each occipital condyle is oriented obliquely so that its anterior end lies closer to the midline. The hypoglossal canal directed laterally and slightly forwards and jugular foramen is lateral to each condyle. Here the figure showing the membranes attached to the atlanto occipital joint that is anterior 
Atlanto occipital membrane, this one, and in the midline there is anterior longitudinal ligament that is merged together and laterally this membrane is merged with the capsular ligament. This is the occipital bone. The next figure showing the posterior atlanto occipital membrane. Here the posterior atlanto occipital membrane, this is the occipital bone and this is the posterior arch of atlas. Being ellipsoid joint, the, uh, they permit movement around two axes, flexion and extension that is nodding occurs around the transverse axis. Slight lateral flexion is permitted around an anterior posterior axis. Extension muscle of flexion is longus capitis and rectus capitis anterior. Extension is done by rectus capitis posterior major and minor, the obliquus capitis superior, semispinalis capitis, the splenius capitis and the upper part of trapezius. Lateral bending is conducted by rectus capitis lateralis, the semispinalis capitis, the splenius capitis, sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. Here is the figure that is showing the previous mentioned muscles that is the neck muscles involved in the movement of atlanto occipital joints. Deep to each condyle traverses hypoglossal canal which transmits the hypoglossal nerve and a manantial branch of ascending pharyngeal artery. So occipital condylar fractures are dangerous proposition due to the intimacy of occipital condyle to neurovascular structures abuting it. Lateral approaches during craniovertebral surgery requires resection of occipital condyles and in transcondylar approach morphometry of occipital condyles is masked. Symmetry of occipital condyles does not pose any difficulty in flexion, extension and lateral bending but asymmetrical facets will give rise to altered kinematics in the atlanto occipital joint. Many patients who suffered a closed head injury are at risk for occipital condylar fractures. Hence, the morphometric analysis of occipital condyles is important clinical. So, the present study will serve as a guideline for dimensions of occipital condyles and their morphological variations in dry adult human occipital bones. Some special information about occipital condyles. The basilar part of occipital bone is separated from the condylar parts by an imaginary line which extends across the anterior one-third and posterior two-thirds of the occipital condyles. The occipital part of squamous part, the condylar part and squamous part is demarcated by an imaginary horizontal line passing through the posterior ends of condyles. Obstetrical hinge joint of body is present in the junction of basioccipital and condyles that permits additional flexion of fetal skull and facilitates the act of parturition. Materials and methods. The study was cross-sectional descriptive type of study and sampling technique was purposive type and it was done in Manusing Medical College from July 2021 to June 2022. A total number of 100 fully ossified dry human occipital bones were taken. The inclusion criteria were fully ossified bone, intact and well-formed bone and similarly the fractured and deformed bone were excluded. Instrument used for the measurement that were digital barriers like calipers, digital camera, camera and plastic wires. The position of hypoglossal canal in relation to occipital condyle. It was an observation that is plastic wires inserted within the hypoglossal canal. Here condyles were marked with pencil in three parts, anterior one third, middle one third and posterior one third. And the relation was observed, occipital condyles were marked into three parts like anterior, middle and posterior third along their long axis and two plastic wires were inserted through the hypoglossal canals. 
this is the position of the hypoglossal canal were observed by <coughs> following the direction of wires on the extracranial side hypoglossal canals were found lateral to the occipital condyles at the level of their anterior or middle one third that were recorded accordingly There are another observation that is on presence of condylar canal in relation to occipital condyle that is shown in the figure. It is another condylar canal may present in posterior to the occipital condyle here. In, in this bone we can see it is present on both sides and in case of this bone it is present unilaterally and here in both sides it is absent that is condylar canal. Length of occipital condyles were measured along the long axis of condyles by placing the blades of vernier slide calipers from anterior tip of anterior tip to posterior tip of occipital condyles. The length were measured on both sides and were expressed in millimeter. Here is the procedure how the length were measured and the width width of occipital condyle were measured on both sides by vernier calipers. The measurement was noted by placing the blades of vernier calipers perpendicular to the long axis of each condyle and was expressed in millimeter like this. Now the height of occipital condyle that is thickness that was the most thickest uh, portion in the mid portion middle one third of the occipital condyle and blades were placed in the middle one third and thickness was taken recorded in millimeter. Anterior intercondylar distance, it was measured between anterior ends of two condyles of each occipital bone by placing the blades of vernier calipers between anterior end of right and left occipital condyles and was noted accordingly like this. Here is the anterior tip of both condyles and distance was, was recorded. Similarly, the posterior intercondylar distance that was measured between posterior ends of right and left in left condyle and the photograph showing the procedure. Measurement of distance from anterior tip of occipital condyle to basion that is basion means the anterior midpoint of the foramen magnum. We see in the photograph. Here is the midpoint of the anterior margin of foramen magnum and another blade on the anterior end of one condyle and this distance is measured. Distance from posterior tip of occipital condyles to opistion. This is the procedure how the distance from the posterior end to the opistion. Now this point is called, sorry, this is the posterior midpoint of foramen magnum and here is the posterior end of condyle and this distance was measured. Now the observation and results. This is a pie chart showing the incidence of different position of hypoglossal canal in relation to occipital condyle where we can see anterior one third that is position location of hypoglossal canal in the anterior one third of the condyle was in 36 percent and most of the hypoglossal canal were found canals were found in the middle one third that is in 64 percent. The length of occipital condyle ranged from 11.8 millimeter to 29 millimeter. More than 85 percent samples were measured within the range of 20 millimeter to 30 millimeter. The length of occipital condyle on right side ranged from 9.9 .9 millimeter to 29.5 millimeter. More than 90 percent samples were measured within the range of 20 millimeter to 30 millimeter. Here the frequency distribution curve showing the comparison of length of right and left occipital condyles. 
width of left occipital condyle range from 88.8 mm to 19.4 mm. More than 85% samples were measured within the range of 10 mm to 16 mm. Width of right occipital condyle range from 8.8 mm to 16.5 mm. More than 80% samples were measured within 10 to 15 mm. The frequency distribution curve showing the width of occipital condyles on both sides. Height of left occipital condyle ranged from 6.7 mm to 15 mm. More than 90% samples were measured within the range of 7 mm to 12 mm on left side. The height of right occipital condyle ranged from 6.8 mm to 15 mm. More than 90% samples were measured within the range of 7 mm to 11 mm. The frequency distribution curve showing the height of both occipital condyles, where the percentage is shown. Anterior intercondylar distance ranged from 13.1 mm to 29.2 mm. More than 82% samples were measured within the range of 17 mm to 27 mm. The frequency distribution curve of intercondylar distance. Posterior intercondylar distance ranged from 30.8 mm to 55 mm. More than 85% samples were measured within the range of 40 mm to 50 mm. Here the frequency distribution curve of posterior intercondylar distance. In the discussion, position of hypoglossal canal in relation to occipital condyle. In this study, the incidence of being hypoglossal canal at the level of middle one third of occipital condyle was more than at anterior one third that was similar to Ashini et al. But the incidence is lower in the study of Kalthur SG et al. than the present study. Length of occipital condyle. In present study regarding the length of occipital condyle was similar to the study of Anesha et al. and of Ajay, Dharti, Shailesh, S. Kavita, Shanta, Anand and Shanti. Parvindak, Mehdi, Ali and Amir found the length more than the present study. In present study, both anterior and posterior intercondylar distance were found similar to the study findings of Ranjana et al., Perin et al., Bajbuga et al. According to the Parvinda, Mehdi, Ali and Amit, both the distances were lower than the present study. Kijilkan et al. found the posterior intercondylar distance more than in present study. Distance from anterior tip of occipital condyle to basion on both sides. Regarding this study, the occipital condyle to Belgium, the distance, the present study matches with the finding of Ramjan et al., Ajay Dharti and Shailesh. Regarding the distance from posterior tip of occipital condyle to opisthion, the present study was similar to the finding of Ramjan et al., Ajay Dharti and Shailesh. Now the clinical importance. Uh, related to the occipital condyle, that is one term, occipitalization. It is uh, the developmental anomaly, anomaly in which partial or complete fusion of atlas with occipital condyles. It is due to failure of segmentation between fourth occipital sclerotome and first cervical sclerotome. Person with occipitalization may have low hairline, torticolis, restricted neck movement, neck movement, abnormal short neck. He or she may reveal symptoms and signs like headache, neck pain, numbness, and pain in the upper limbs. Occipital condyle fractures are rare but to, um, due to its position, but it may be caused by accident, assault, or sports injury. The symptoms of occipital condyle fracture may be subtle. The only symptoms may be neck pain or one-sided arm or shoulder weakness but the alar ligament and tectorial membrane may be torn. Occipital condylar syndrome is a rare syndrome characterized by severe unilateral occipital headache and ipsilateral 12th nerve palsy. 
Tumors are the common cause of occipital condylar syndrome. It also may be caused by craniovertebral tuberculosis. The condylar breeding is, a, is an important step in the transcondylar approach. And the important question is how much of occipital condyle can be removed without damaging nearby structures and causing craniocervical instability. In case of shorter occipital condyle, more than two thirds of occipital condyle removal leads to craniocervical instability. Hence, the knowledge of morphometry of occipital condyle is surgically important. Now, the conclusion the occipital condyles are integral part of neck and the base of the skull. In the present study, an effort was made to measure various parameters related to the occipital condyles. The parameters should be taken into consideration during surgery of craniovertebral junction by neurosurgeon and orthopedicians to minimize the mortality and morbidity. The preoperative radiological evaluation through plain radiography, CT, and MRI are important for achieving surgical success. And this evaluation is required before surgery to prevent complications like hemorrhage, atlanto-occipital instability, and injury to the major structures passing through the foramen magnum. The findings are also useful for the clinical anatomist, anthropologist for the purpose of teaching and further research work. <coughs> The major limitation of this study was the lack of knowledge regarding the age and gender of the collected occipital bones. Our key message is symmetry of occipital condyles allows all the possible movements smoothly but difficulties occurs when there is asymmetry or fracture or any surgical intervention that causes damage to the occipital condyles and structures related to the condyles. So, resection of occipital condyle requires an in-depth idea of measurement on how much to resect or how much to be left. Thanks for your patient here. Thank you.